Welcome to The Real, presented by BR Sports on Max, the one to watch. Let's start off with this iconic play. Can you walk me through this against Alabama? Yeah, this is one of the ones. This is uh, kind of where my Heisman run started that year, this play. I remember in the play, being in the moment, feeling the fumble come and being like, oh shit, like, you know, we're gonna turn the ball over in our own red zone. You know, statistically, your chances of winning turning the ball over in your own red zone is, you know, it's gonna knock your percentages down quite a bit. So just being able to get this back, get out of there and just, you know, as I turned and looked, the second that I looked, I saw nothing but, you know, one white jersey. How do you even keep track of the ball there? You know, I think I just felt it pop out and I remember turning around and it was just there. You know, it wasn't like I had to go out and reach for it. It wasn't like I had to do anything other than like, kind of saw it out of the corner of my eye and it fell back in my hand. Then it's just, you know, chaos. You know, just a, a good play on my part to not fumble this ball and have a turnover on downs, but an even better job by Ryan Swope being a vet. Um, you know, running into this open space and just getting open no matter what. So when it came to Alabama, for some reason you had a flair for the dramatic. Can you take me through this ridiculous sequence? This is probably one of my favorite plays that I got, that, you know, happened in college. You know, for me, I'm, these are two wide open routes. If you ask anybody about this, if the NFL, if this is open, um, 100%. We have one and two that you throw this ball on third and eight, they take off, we get a first down. But that's just not how we were rolling back in the day. We were rolling with the flair for the dramatic, so you know we're back to our own 45, 40 yard line now. So we're looking at a 30 yard sack. So at this point, I've got one, eight, 42, 47, one, two, three, we got five white jerseys, you know, honing in. At this point, there's not really much else to do but let this thing go and so we just really launch it. Throwing it to Mike Evans, our first round draft pick, our, you know, Hall of Fame NFL receiver. You know, when I let this ball go, I'm, I tell him on the sideline that, you know, I'm treating it like a punt. So if it gets picked or whatever, we were gonna punt it anyway. The guy who ends up catching it is a, you know, three-star receiver from a small East Texas town, didn't play a ton of snaps for us, but he absolutely goes up and mosses our first round pick. <laughs> Mike couldn't jump over a phone book right there and Edward Pope out of nowhere comes up and makes an unbelievable play. It makes me look like a hero, you know, in a situation that could have gone a multitude of different ways. There's no way I should get out of this. And this shot right here is, uh, you know, I can't really see anything. You're just <laughs> launching this blindly and gonna take a ripper. You know, I think at that point in time, you know, maybe I was just him, you know? <laughs> All right, against Alabama, yet again, what was going through your mind here? Y'all needed a play. Ah, oh, man, so this is whole game. You know, this is the year after um, we had beat Alabama on the road. So they come back, number one versus number six. This is just me and Mike at our best right here, to be honest. Me and Mike had a lot of um, free reign to kind of mm -hmm. do what we wanted. So if I wanted him on a comeback, I could give him a signal. If I wanted him on a fade, I could literally just throw him up a peace sign and he would just take off. And right before this ball is snapped, I'm gonna look out at Mike and I'm gonna tap my face mask before we're gonna see um, anything. That's just telling him to take off to a post. So you can see the eyes there looking left. Well, with that being man coverage, pause it right there, that safety is gonna take off all the way to try and take away that go route on the outside, on the left side. So that leaves Mike running, running free. He had this meanest Derrick Henry kind of stiff arm. And this guy just like doesn't have a chance. Like that Mike is as lanky as it gets, as long, and this guy's just hanging on for dear life. I think in this game, Mike had 250 yards receiving. And what is the adrenaline like when you're soaring 100 yards down the field? I mean, that's as good as it gets. That's just like <laughs> pure, young, like bliss. Like to be able to go out here and, and be at home. I, I haven't heard Kyle Field probably as loud as that moment in time right there. You know, to be able to give our team hope, a spark, to get it to a one score game with eight minutes left is, you know, giving yourself a chance to win the game. That was more of a standard pass for you, but traditionally, you were one of the most unorthodox quarterbacks that college football has ever seen. This is a full-blown scramble drill play for us. So we would run this in practice. Um, we would run this almost every single day, you know, against our defense to just get good at breaking off and going different directions. You know, we got two guys running into each other up there, but it's really just kind of chaos, full flow, figure it out. Of course, you can already see Mike down here at the bottom. bottom he's throwing a hand always wants the ball. He's always trying to score a touchdown. Even when he was totally covered. Even when he was totally covered. He was still open. He was, hey, 7-11. So that pump fake was just impromptu. You planned to throw it until in midair you realized you didn't have it? Yeah, I just didn't have it. I mean, he's pointing up. I'm, I probably should throw more of a lob ball and get it high so we can go up and get it. He always wanted to box out, especially in our first year, you know. It's so good how good Mike's hands are to be able to go down and pick that ball up 
on such a terrible throw. The funny thing that a lot of people don't know about Mike is Mike really only played three, four years of football before he got into the NFL. He wants the alley -oop the whole way. He's just talking to it. I'm throwing it, I'm pumping it. I'm trying to get it to him. It doesn't look like it's open. I don't want to hit that guy in the back of the head. So we get one pump fake and jump and then we jump again and throw it again. It's a terrible ball. It couldn't be worse. <laughs> you could definitely see those instincts coming to play with him. 100%, especially early in the season. He just wanted everything just like this. Like, <laughs> like throw, it, throw, it, throw it in the post. So you mentioned chaos, which is definitely something you seem to thrive in. This is a difference in an amazing play being made and a 10 yard loss for a sack. This little bit, mm -hmm. nothing worse than getting somebody hitting your foot and getting your heels clicked together and then you know, it's such a light brush, but it knocks your feet together and it knocks you over. This is so close to never being a reality. I'm still surprising myself with getting out of some of these things. This is not a very good route. So we're pumping it, we're trying everything we can to make this work. Normally you catch that ball, you take a peek, you look, you see the double coverage, you're off it right away. Me in that situation, I'm sitting there, I'm pumping it, trying to make it happen. Even though no matter how many times you pump it, what you do, it's the wrong look. You're never gonna be able to get that ball to him without you know, disaster striking. Luckily, you know, I got us there anyway. Now this was a confidence building game for us. You know, I didn't realize till after, but broke SEC all purpose yardage record in this game and my first SEC game. You know, we really put it on you know, the Razorbacks. Yeah, has that, that record been broken? I think Joe Burrow maybe, it's a possibility. I broke my own record um, later in that year, I think though too. I mean, that's good company to be in regardless. It is, definitely. You're always teetering in the danger zone. Is that where you like to be? I think a lot of those things and plays like that that happen um, probably ended up coming back to hurt me a little bit, but now it's just get to the pylon um, by any means possible. Head honchos in the NFL like routine, but we don't care about routine. We're trying to make sports center top 10 <laughs> at this point. All right, so next up we got the Superman run versus Mississippi State. Do you remember this? I remember this game, great game. So for us, you know, going on the road, we're starting to catch our stride a little bit. You know, we had lost two games this year. This is probably one of my favorite runs that I had a chance to do in college. But as this ball is snapped, you know, we're looking right the whole way, kind of. You know, we take our three-step drop, we literally have four verticals, take off. Kendrick does a great job outside trying to move in them, stimming and slipping them inside. And you'll see it right there, boom, there's a slip. My eyes are glued right. This guy's been <laughs> running down. He ran all the way back to the locker room. So at this point, it's just full speed, go. I did get flagged for this, which I wasn't. Uh, really? I did. Excessive? I, did. I can't, can't do anything in college, I guess. So got a 15 yard penalty. I got yelled out a little bit, but. Um, it didn't really slow us down for the rest of the you're, day. You're just looking up to a role model. I love Cam Newton so much, so to be able to hit this and do this was awesome. I'm just trying to pay homage to the guy. Who are your top five most entertaining college football quarterbacks to watch of all time? Ooh, entertaining. Okay, in no order. Cam Newton is, is my favorite, you know, college quarterback of all time. I think you have to put Pat White from West Virginia mm -hmm. was a guy who was easily one of the most entertaining. Um, from a passion standpoint, the way that the guy played, I think Baker Mayfield was entertaining mm -hmm. as you could possibly get. Planting the flag down. Planting the flag, right just going out and being able to back up, you know, everything that he talked about. And, you know, if we're talking from an entertainment factor, I don't think it gets any better than that. Joe Burrow, that offense, you know, Jamar Chase, Justin Jefferson, what they had on an offense, he's as entertaining as it gets just because mm -hmm. he slung the ball around the yard. And then I'm gonna go back a little bit entertaining, Colt Brennan was an absolute gunslinger from Hawaii. Yeah. He was a beast. Beast. You wouldn't beast. put yourself on that list, so you're just being humble. Yeah, no, I mean, I, uh, my, my entertainment and my flash and what it was and the whole Money Manziel and this stuff, you know, it kind of speaks for itself. You know, there's so many guys who have played college football over the years. You kind of almost really have to break it down into eras. And I would feel really, really stupid if I didn't put Lamar Jackson on that list. Because I think the shiftiness and what Lamar is able to do, he's 1A and 1B with Cam, but he had that Mike Vick about him. So if you had to pick one single highlight from your college career, which would be the one to watch? I think the last game that I played against Duke, you know, the kind of jump over the guy, land on your feet, spin out of the pocket mm -hmm. and, and turn and then throw that little quick, you know, dump off, you know, really epitomizes probably a lot of what, you know, my game was about. That game was kind of the cherry on top of, um, you know, my career to be able to, you know, if I would have probably lost that game, I think my chances of coming back to a and were really, really high. I don't think I would have left on a losing note. Coming off a of suspension, you were about that action versus Rice. Half a game, baby. <laughs> what happened here after you scored? So in this game, you know, Rice is chirping the whole day. I'm the talk of 
the college football world, I'm, I'm just not great at handling it at this point. If you say something to me, you say something to my boys, we're gonna go. Like, we're, we're about that action 100% at this point. It's just nothing but talking shit. You see this all the time. Mm -hmm. I'm pretty much looking at it probably like, you guys are trash. Like, look at the scoreboard. You know, you're not in this game. You're Rice, we're a and we're big brother, your little brother, we're stuffing you in a locker today. After that, it's look at the scoreboard. No, they're quick. Turn that back around. Look at the reaction time <laughs> from these referees right here. Look at these guys. First of all, we're in, they're oop, right at me. They're, they're ready to go. They're hyped. Whatever I said, this must have crossed the line. The look at the look at the scoreboard must have really been, you know, I'm trying to walk away. Say something else, look at the oop, boom, they're on me. He's watching the flag go in the air too. He's admiring his work. I, I'm, all, I'm, I'm, all, I'm all for it. This is probably, you know, where I was just at being a little hard headed and stubborn. You know, Summy's obviously pissed at me. He's just glaring me down. He is hot pissed. Look at this glare. Pause it right there. You think he's very happy with me right now? He's like, this one. I've had to answer a million questions and he's gonna come out here and do this to me after being in the locker room for the first half. What a clown is probably what he's thinking. Even the announcers were like, this is no time to be talking trash. Do you agree with that? No, I don't agree with him at all. <laughs> Mike starts this whole thing. He scores, he's already looking for 41. He's looking for anybody. This was Mike, young Mike Evans in a nutshell. He starts this whole thing and then runs off. So I'm putting this one on him. So in their defense, would you rather go after Mike Evans or yourself? Oh, they should come after me yeah, for sure. Exactly. Yeah, I would, I would mess with Mike. So this might've been a culmination from earlier in the game. I need to know what exactly you told them here. I have a feeling, but I need to hear it from you. They're just talking about autographs the whole day. Oh. And you know, I think I'm just going back like, at least somebody wants my autograph, bro. Like, what are, what are we talking about here? Like, nobody wants your autograph? Nobody wants your shit? What a good hit, by the way, though. <laughs> this is a shot. Like, I, I have absolutely no reason to be talking to be talking anything right here and we're and we're going straight into it you know the first clip that we just saw was was later in the game mm -hmm. so this is earlier and i remember this 92 is the guy who came up and kind of started saying mm -hmm. something so he is nowhere involved in the play <laughs> I mean, you can just tell by his sock shoe combination right now that this guy doesn't play a lot. I wish I had a little bit more poise and a little bit more chill to be able to handle those situations a little bit better, but you know, at that point in time, we weren't. So you weren't asking them if they wanted an autograph? I would have given them one, though. For how much money? Free. For free. Damn, 46, you gotta follow up. Okay, so you were way more than just a quarterback kind. This is great. This is Coach Someone's idea uh, of how we help win me the Heisman. So we can put, you know, one of one extra point on your, you know, Heisman resume. Monday practice, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday. So four practices in a row, I'm four for four. We're all feeling great. But the field goal for me was really like a foreign object. So as this goes on, you know, I am still in this moment right here that we're watching on film debating if I'm gonna soccer style mm -hmm. kick it or if I'm gonna toe punch it. And I'm like, all right, you gotta go with what you think is best. I'm toe punching. Look at this stance. I need some kicker to be able to look like, what is this guy doing? Couldn't be more straight up and down. We got no knee bend. We got the pointiest shoes you could ever have in the world on. And, and we're just gonna take two steps and just boot this thing. And it's gonna go catastrophically bad. Wide right, I actually got it higher than I remember. <laughs> it's just crazy. As it leaves my foot, I immediately feel it. Like I'm like squat down, cause I'm like, please just catch a piece of it. Like don't double doink it, don't just catch a piece and somehow slide this through. Cause this just couldn't be more embarrassing. Like we gotta get out of here, remove ourselves from this situation <laughs> and get back to the bench area as fast as possible. So most of the times you went finesse, but occasionally you were on your bully mode. Takes you a while to finally have that aha moment where you're like, it really is man versus man. And if you get lower and you run harder, you know, you're gonna run over somebody. You know, this guy got absolutely boomstick. <laughs> and unfortunately for me, as you'll back it up, my right foot here as I go to plant is out of bounds. So I'm now down at the two, running this guy over. This isn't a touchdown, which is the most upsetting part of the whole thing. So I get up and he just kind of happens to be there. You know, I'm not trying to do the step over. I think I'm just so hyped, like in my head, and in my helmet, I'm definitely laughing like, oh my gosh, that's gonna hurt tomorrow morning for old buddy. This is the sick part that I loved about football. So another player with the Oklahoma drill played a part in helping you is when you ate this tackle against Arkansas. Yep, we just wanted to run the football. And right here, I remember this happening in the moment. As this hit comes, I am shocked that I stay on my feet right here. <laughs> I feel like this should not have been the outcome of this play. No, but and, you know, going back to what we were saying earlier a little bit, you know, maybe because I wasn't, you know, the tallest guy in the world, my center of gravity and like being a little, 
you know, stockier and shorter, you know, help my balance with, you know, so many plays like this. I also think, you know, wearing a size 15 shoe when I was in college too, helped my equilibrium, my balance a little bit to where I didn't get knocked off. Huh, size 15 shoe. Flippers. So if I wear a size 15 shoe, I'll be out here yeah, juking? Yeah, yeah. All right. Stand on your feet. <laughs> take that. You know, I think right here I'm probably, you know, just more hyped that I didn't get absolutely flattened because that play could have gone, you know, a multitude of different ways. Big Heisman run. This is a big Heisman moment. You know, this is a picture that you're gonna see. This is, um, you know, what I saw all over social media after we win, you know, this game. Doing a stiff arm, you know, getting somewhat of the Heisman pose um, in a game like this, in a stadium like this, in a setting like this is as good as it gets. And this is where, you know, I think I was at my best in college um, to be able to take off and run the ball. As you can see on this run, I'm seeing color flash there on the right, right in front of me. So it kind of closes that hole up. And this is just hit it and try and get out. You know, not the greatest ball security right there. And then you get the Heisman moment right here where, you know, it's just trying to say, get off me, man. I'm just trying to get this guy off me and go get some more yards. And it ends up being perfect. And I didn't realize it until after the game that, you know, that stiff arm looked like that and that um, capture that, that Heisman moment. So Heisman Trophy winner in today's game will be raking up millions. I want you to put yourself on this list from back in the day and then what you would project yourself to make if you were playing today. So let's start with back in the day, 2012, 2013. Where would you fall in this list? I think I'd probably fall somewhere around um, in between Livy and Shador. I think it would be somewhere in there. Today's NIL money, um, I think it's probably, I'd probably be right below Bronny. I think it's really hard to, I don't think you're gonna out, have the ability to out earn, you know, LeBron James' son. This for me though, being able to see this is, is awesome. This is a Reggie Bush-esque move on your part right here. One on one against a defender, do your eyes light up? This is at Ole Miss staple. So they ran this against us pretty much every year and teams started to adapt this against us to be able to stop me from running the ball. You know, they would leave a number 54 linebacker in there who was their starting bigger run filling, run stopping linebacker. Um, and then we would just be able to break him off or, you know, break him down and um, take off and run. And it's deflating for a defense to be in this situation and be in third and 14 and give up what's about to be a 25 yard run. And how hyped are you to see the defender smack the ground in frustration? He, he knows, it's literally, he sits in this film meeting all week and he takes out his notepad and he looks down at his notes for a whole week and it literally just says tackle number two, follow number two, stop number two. And that's his only job for the whole week. No coverage, no zone, no get to the hash and drop, no hook player, no nothing. Follow him wherever he goes, sideline to sideline. This is easily one of my favorite highlights. I watch this highlight probably more than anybody because it's just more than any other play just because it's so good. For me, this little inside shimmy, no ball security. Now we're gonna try and set the guy, the next guy up for the same thing and we're just running crazy. We're gonna wrap up the highlight portion of this with a comeback versus Ole Miss. Y'all were down bad, you needed to play right here. Yeah, first year. Um, this is our first game, 2012, you know, um, we lose this game, it knocks me out of the Heisman race altogether. And for me, this is probably a huge progression point for me in my freshman season. Everybody's coming, they have more people um, blessing us than we can block. So automatically this is a check and we're launching this thing to the corner. Doesn't get any better for us, we're drooling. You know, this ball has already been decided to be mm -hmm. thrown about right now. Look where Swope is at the top. He doesn't have his head turned around. He's just running. When I'm throwing this ball to a spot, he's running to a spot. So this is the beautiful part about the game of football. When you have two guys who are on the same page and this ball leaves, he doesn't look around until right now. So th this is just teach tape, clinic tape for us that we would you know, show to any young guy that would come into Texas A&M. And this is just clutch, but this is you know, Ryan Swope at his best. Um, me throwing the ball at an absolute bucket and just, it's what it's all about crunch time to be able to go out and get this go out and get this win. So let's wrap up this with a little game right here. We're gonna assemble your dream team party boy trip. So I'm gonna need you to pick at first three celebrities to go with you on this trip. Cool, oh, we're bringing the boy for sure. All right, so we got Drake. You're, you're bringing the boy for sure. You know, I answered this question on the billboard or on the Jumbotron at Texas A&M at halftime of, of one of the games. And my three answers were, Drake, Charlie Sheen, and, Ti <laughs> and Tiger Woods. Um, or Gronk, I think it was Gronk, okay. Charlie Sheen, and Tiger Woods. Now I would think that would change a little bit. Three celebrities, I'm taking Drake. Um, 
I'm party with Gronk. I'm still gonna take Gronk. He's a, he's a really, really, really good one. And then um, oh, Tiger's gotten a little older now. So I don't the know. Charlie Sheen face is also done for you. Probably so, bro. <laughs> that was just that was such that was so out of pocket. That was <laughs> that was uh, that was that was <laughs> so good. You know, some of his interviews from the past. I was probably watching all the time. Like, man, this so guy's my uh, this guy's my spirit animal. Uh, who's my third one gonna be? So we're going Drake Gronk. Drake and Gronk are, are really really good ones. Um, I really like partying with Max Homa. You know, he's probably a little bit um, under the radar celebrity, but he is my guy on the PGA Tour. He lives out here. We do get mm -hmm. to party quite a bit. So I'm gonna go Max Homa, give me Gronk, and give me Drake. Okay. Wild, wild crew that we've already, you know, put together so far. Location. Yeah, where are you going? With these guys, I think we'll go, we'll probably go to Delilah in LA um, and, and really get in the mix. Um, in the back room or the regular room? We'll be in the regular room. Okay. The main stage, maybe jazz night would, would be it would be a good night to go. Um, drink of choice. Oh, with this group, I'm probably gonna be on Hennessy sidecars for the entirety of the night. Um, Two perf performances. Drake doesn't count now. No, Drake doesn't count. Let's get a um, let's get a performance by Bieber. Love it. Let's go Bieber and Morgan Wallen. <laughs> They need to collab, as is. They need That's to. It's a good collab. We're at Delilah, <laughs> Delilah with Gronk, Drake, and Max Homa. Um, we're drinking Hennessy sidecars all night, and we're uh, you know watching Bieber and Morgan Wallen do a little duo. Light of your life, no? That's so wild. <laughs> Johnny Football, thank you so much for sitting with us, breaking down your highlights. To whoever says you don't watch game tape, watch your mouth, because clearly you exemplified that you do. Thank you so much. It was an honor. Appreciate you, bro.